Okay, the time is now 6.30. Welcome everyone to the Board of Selectmen's meeting for the Town of Nottingham for November 6, 2023. I'd like to call this to order by starting with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> just as a reminder, uh, just got a couple little things to get out of the way. Um, there will be a uh, concert at the Nottingham Community Church, which is at 106 Church Street. That supports the... Uh, food pantry so please uh come out and support the the food pantry that, hmm? time time is at uh november 12th three from three to five that's a sunday that's sunday. sunday thank you ben <laughs> you're welcome steve <laughs> on a more serious note um, i'm not sure if anybody heard i guess there's a structure fire that happened on a mutual road this evening so i'm not going to name what the residence is but uh our thoughts and prayers are with them um, okay, so has everybody had an opportunity to look at the uh, manifest payroll? And if there are any questions, if there's no any questions or comments, we'll. Who would like to make a motion? Make a motion to approve the manifest of 103023 and payroll of 1031. I'll second. 2023. Motion made by Steve Welch, seconded by. John Morin, roll call. Aye, Steve Walsh. Aye, John Morin. Aye, Ben Barlett. Aye, Tim Dabrio. Aye, Mushroom. Okay. Okay, minutes. 10, 11, 10, 16, 10, 27, and 10, 30. I will abstain from 10 and 11 because I was not here. Do we want to do them one at a time or all of the? Was all of us here on the uh, remaining three? I, I was were. not here on the 20th. All right, so we'll do them separately. Yeah. All right, who's had an opportunity to look at the 11th? I have. I have. <coughs> Are we all good with the corrections? And yep. Okay, who'd like to make a motion? I'll make a motion to approve the minutes from 10-11-2023. I'll, I'll second. Okay, motion made by Tim Derby, seconded by Matt Sh Sherlin. Roll call. Aye, Steve Welch. Aye, John Warren. Aye, Tim Dabrio. Aye, Matt Sherlin. And I've been Barley Upstain. Minutes for 1016. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes from October 16th, 2023, as amended from Kelly, with Kelly's amendments. I'll second. Motion made by Tim Dabriel, seconded by Steve Welch. Roll call. Aye, Steve Welch. Aye, John Morin. Aye, Ben Barlett. Aye, Tim Dabriel. Aye, Matt Sherlin. 10, 7, 10, 27. I make a motion to approve the minutes from 10, 27, 2023. I'll second. Okay, Matt, um, Tim Gabriel uh, made a motion. Matt, Matt Sherwin seconded. Roll call. Steve Walsh abstain. Hi, Joe Morin. Hi, Ben Barlett. Hi, Tim Gabriel. Hi, Matt Sherwin. I'm just trying to keep it so it's simple for the who's recording the minutes that knows instead of be jumping around for who's approving and who's not. Yep. 1030. I make a motion to approve the minutes from 1030 2023 as amended by Kelly. Second. Motion made by Tim Dabriel, seconded by Steve Welch. Roll call. Aye, Steve Welch. Aye, John Morin. Aye, Ben Barlett. Aye, Tim Dabriel. Aye, Matt Sherman. Okay. Everybody had an opportunity to uh, look over the uh, non-public minutes. Any questions, comments? If not, I'd like to make a motion. I make a motion to approve the non-public minutes from October 16th and October 27th, 2023. Um, I, Steve Walsh, on the 16th, I'll abstain from the 27th. I, John Warren, both. I've been Barlett, both. I, Tim Dabrio. I'm Matt Sherman for both. There you go. 
Okay. Second that one. Who seconded that? I made the motion. Nobody ended up seconding it. He kind of went in. So uh, I will second. Okay. So second. the motion made by Tim Dabio, seconded by Matt Sherlin. Sorry. I was like, I think we. Thanks, Steve. That one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, reports from assigned boards and committees. Budget. So budget uh, committee met last uh, Thursday. Really didn't get a whole lot accomplished. We're just supposedly going to overview the um, town portion of it. Um, really wasn't able to do anything at that point. Um, meet again this uh, Thursday. Okay. Planning board. Uh, last planning board meeting was canceled. Um, there really wasn't anything on the agenda, and we were having a problem with lack of uh, a quorum. Oh, wow. So, yeah, it doesn't happen very often, but people were on vacation, people were doing things, and it yep. just happened to be. Uh, there is a meeting coming up um, for this Wednesday, which <coughs> we're discussing a, a subdivision lot, one from six acres to four acres with a two acre lot they're cutting off on 156, and the other one will be. Um, I'm sorry, I forgot about the top of my head. It's on the minutes, so you'll see. But it okay. shouldn't be a fairly light meeting for us. Okay. So hopefully we'll get to talk about budget and some other things that we need to talk about. And when are they meeting next? Uh, we're meeting this Wednesday. Wednesday, okay. And CIP? Scheduled to meet a week from tomorrow. Excellent. Anything on Marston? No, nope. dugouts are almost done. Excellent. Town Ministry Report. Um, first thing I'm going to request is at your last meeting on October 16th, you reviewed a non-public session, the minutes of the non-public session held February 27th. Um, I'm requesting a motion to unseal those minutes. I make the motion to unseal the minutes from February 20, uh, non-public minutes from the February 27th, 2023 meeting. I'll second. Motion made by Tim Dabio, seconded by Steve Welch. Roll call. Aye, Steve Welch. Hi, John Morin. Hi, Ben Barlett. Hi, Dan Gabriel. Hi, Matt Sherman. Okay. Um, Brian Allen obtained a quote from Fisher Plows of Lee to install a sander in the new utility pickup truck. Uh, we have a plow on it. <laughs> John's already saying no. Uh, the price is 6326 It will enable the truck to be used both for plowing and sanding, and we can also um, utilize a plow contractor that doesn't have a CDL if we needed to. Um, obviously, this would be helpful for the <clears throat> parking lot and intersection cleanups. There may be some additional fabrication just for the sander to be able to fit properly between the <coughs> two boxes. Um, but this is something that I'm proposing to you as an option. And if you did approve the purchase of the sander and any necessary fabrications, um, I would just request that you would expend the money from the same New Hampshire DOT highway funds that we received for road maintenance that we use to purchase the truck and the current balance of forty six thousand two hundred and seventy seven dollars and i would be looking for authorization up to seven thousand to cover the additional fabrication who's going to do the fabrication um i don't know if it would be something that brian will be doing with his mechanical ability or if it's something that we'd have to have i would feel better if it was done at oh. fisher hmm? at fisher yes so when this truck was got <coughs> and approved at our deliberation series for the meeting, uh, it was told by the then director for the highway department that this truck was not to be used with a sander in the back. He Due did say to that. the wear and tear, we were saying that this truck was supposed to be utility to carry chainsaws, to carry equipment to job sites, and a plow was okay, but it was not to have the sander, since the sander is going to wreck the body of that truck. Uh, and for longevity, that was a purpose of reason why we were not and were told and people voted for. So now again, things change. It's up we, to you guys, you know, here. But again, the we, original thing with this was here was that we were not putting a sander in it. We also learned that that wasn't a properly fitted truck either. After again, the fact. So well, that too. So I will not support us buying a sander for this truck. And that's how I they feel about it. requesting a sander for this truck, or is it just? Yes. Can the one? Can I use the one that's at the recycling center? Why? No. Uh, because this is a utility body truck, so I mean it has to fit between the, the snowplow. It's not designed. It's, no. it's a different design. 
No, I mean, can they use the, doesn't the one that's at the like the old one? Oh, the plow? you're talking about using that for plowing? Right. I don't, I don't know how long it's going to last. I mean, it got. This is a truck that's had its frame welded four times already. So I'm not sure uh, how much useful it's going to be used as a It's, it's been retired truck. to the recycling yeah. center for it to get whatever is left of remaining life out of it. Because they'll be using it there to plow. <clears throat> Yeah, it won't get used nearly as much. No. Do we know who request was this? Brian was thinking of it. Was this from the new? Uh, this was something that was kind of in works from <coughs> the interim public works director. It was a conversation that he and Brian had had about the usefulness of the truck. I mean, the question has been raised as to why we even have one, why we purchased one, whether it was necessary. Um, so this is to make sure that it gets used. I mean, I'm sure it would be getting used anyway but I do agree with John that a steel bed putting salt down would greatly re reduce the life of that truck um, do any of our people not have a CDL right now no so if I could just add to that we you also uh, I was gonna make my last statement okay oh, go ahead, go ahead. nobody doesn't have a CDL right now we have the rest of the trucks I would that seems something that maybe the new foreman can just kind of drive around, clean up some stuff as he sees. But if we need to like lay down some salt, use one of the other trucks right now and just see how the year goes. And then if we're in a need starting at the beginning of the year, and we're like, we're, we've found ourselves in a need for it, then I would say come out and put the F550 small enough that it should fit everywhere. And that has a standard. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I don't see the justification for destroying the truck yet. So if I might add to that, um, the polycaster sanders are considerably lighter compared to the stainless steel um, sanders that uh, they put on the back of these trucks. However, the suspension on this particular vehicle, I question whether it can actually withhold any weight for any length of time, could break springs and so on, which we've seen in the one ton already. Um, I've always been an advocate of uh, if we're going to get a truck, it should always be in the 550 series. So can it, so it can handle the, uh, uh, the weight, the abuse that it takes, and, and so on. It's just a much dirtier frame and suspension system. So I will not support an, uh, adding a sander to this vehicle. Well, you got three there. That's one added in. I think we've um, heard enough. Yeah. You deliberated, you're good. What was the truck in uh, it's the new utility truck for the highway department. So, is that a 350? Yeah, it's F the black extended cab that should come drive around. <clears throat> okay, moving on. Uh, the planning board has an application before them to be heard this Wednesday, subbing off of what John was saying. Uh, the applicant's requesting to change the cistern type from poly as required to concrete, or in lieu of a cistern, add sprinkler systems to each proposed home within. <laughs> reasoning being the substantially higher cost of polyfiberglass cisterns. Moore's Road subdivision. Thank you. Uh, the planning board chair, Ed Veal, has, uh, is seeking input from the town, and I'm just reaching out to you to see if you have any input to provide prior to this going for hearing on Wednesday. You got more than that? Like, why? How, what, how big is the subdivision? Uh, well, it's two roads. So, because there's Moore's Road and there's Jamsa Trail. Uh, so, it's there's three lots on Jamsa, I think, three. Again, it's been a couple months. I've seen a bunch of other ones, but on this, and then there's the majority is on Moore's. So, one of the things we talked about when those was whether they're going to have sprinkler systems. And then it was, you know, because that's what I was shooting for, make them all sprinklers save the town on the cistern things because I think it's a waste of our money but that's my point um, but the, it was decided for the cisterns and again it's probably a cost factor I haven't heard from the applicant of the full example which we'll hear at the meeting you know for what they're doing uh, but the, the subdivision has been already approved so this is just a coming back to a formality of part of the subdivision approval of what what they're saying so what are our other cisterns right now <coughs> some are palms some are yeah i mean i've I, I don't know it all i mean there's many cisterns in town i can't tell you if they're all the exact same or not i'm sure it's changed throughout the year and each one's getting kind of 
bumped. I mean, I'd have to probably see some sort of like financial hardship why they couldn't meet the standard and why one over the other. I don't, it would be nice if they were here to tell us instead of just kind of ask. And I don't know if it's a planning okay. person, but. It's not the first time that it's come up. Um, Ed had suggested that perhaps we reached out to an engineering firm for an opinion on <coughs> what they're constructed out of. I mean, obviously, we don't want to be held liable if we allow a concrete cistern and have it. And knowing, knowing What's the plan. What's the lifespan? Knowing the planning board tomorrow when this comes in front of us, because it's the first time we're going to hear this, the decision will not be made by the planning board on tomorrow night. It most likely will be. Let's do our research, let's figure out, and then we'll come back with an answer. The planning board will come back with an answer. So for us to give an exact answer tonight, I don't think is necessary, mm -mm. due to the fact that the planning board is not gonna give them probably, in my opinion, with my years of experience on that board, yeah. that they're not gonna give the guy the, the yes or no without finding more details about it too. Because again, this is the first, it's come in front of the planning board. So very unlikely the planning board gives a first time decision on yeah. anybody that comes in front so but they knew I, about the cistern at the inception of that was approved for the, the subdivision right. right they're asking for a whole different thing so they'll have to consider it think about it the board will have to talk about it and they'll probably again ask for an engineering to determine what the difference is which is better which is why or and find out a reason so like I said it'd have to be some sort of like substantial <coughs> burden why we would deviate. Right, we don't want to be stuck with a bill down the road that the concrete one fails and now we got to replace it on. Septic tanks takes <coughs> a long time though and those hold water. So. So I mean, I don't think that the concrete could be bad, but if it's saying it's required to be poly, why would we deviate? <coughs> Sorry. Are you prepared to give them that? Oh, I'm going to be at the meeting anyway, so I'll tell them. Doesn't matter. I'll, I'll be happy to. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> All right. Um, I spoke with Brady Rambo, who's our new contact at New Hampshire DES. Uh, we have an application in process for a public water supply at Marston. The application's been submitted, but it was missing required documentation. Um, I'm working on compiling the information needed, needed, including a site plan to include the well location, the average consumption and acreage currently being irrigated, which Tim was able to get for me this weekend, um, and to set up quarterly testing for bacteria and annual testing for, um, I said nitrates, but it's not nitrates. I have to find out what the annual testing is. I don't have it written down. Uh, once this documentation is supplied, the application will be processed for a transient water supply, which will enable the use of the bubbler and a source of water in an emergency situation. So that process has been, I've picked up the pieces and we're somewhat moving forward. Uh, with assistance from Owen Friend Gray, the town has applied for New Hampshire DOT road safety audit for the intersection of Route 156 Raymond Road and Deerfield and Ledge Farm Roads. There have been seven crashes reported in the past 10 years, uh, with one of those crashes being a fatality involving a motorcycle this summer. So I will be able to update you further on that once we get more information, but the application's at least been submitted at this point. Uh, due to the declining temperatures over the next week, it's been decided that it will be best to hold off on the new playground build until spring. We were originally scheduling it for Saturday the 18th. Um, but the temperatures forecasted for next week are in the high 40s, and there's question about whether it will be sufficient for the concrete to set up properly, which is required as a base for the playground structure. Um, so they will be delivering the structure, will be storing it, and we're hopeful for early spring to be able to construct our new playground structure. Okay, here comes the question. Okay. Which we talked about last meeting. Where are we going to store it? Since um, our storage is very limited, and this is not something that's in a, a little 12 by 12 box. Well, the fortunate part is that playground equipment is meant to be outdoors, and since we've got a lot of the brush and debris cleaned from the side of the building, we can actually store it off to the side by the old building, and then the internal parts and pieces, the, the, the bolts and the, the other parts that we don't want to lose, we can find a location for them inside. Is it possible to go in the old fire station? Possibly make it a little bit more secure we'll have to I mean well if it's way back there somebody's got to really have some 
cojones to go all the way back there with the truck to put it on and know. drive away with it. So with that being said, I've provided a memo that Courtney uh, wrote up for all of the wants and needs that we'll need for tools and assistance when the time comes to do the install. There's a, a list of... I'm sure with uh, some during the winter programs in the early spring, Courtney with her outreach, you know, the success she's having with all the... Uh, <coughs> and she's doing stuff like this could possibly reach out to some residents in town to mm -hmm. help that before we start adding a list of things that she needs us to buy and spend money on I think she's or hopeful that we use. she can coordinate the the build with the community cleanup day and be able to utilize you know, some of those resources yep. there you go mm -hmm. already figuring it out Perfect. So we're, we're just gonna hope for an early spring <laughs> um, <laughs> Steve Rollins joined us last week as our new highway director. Uh, he started a week ago Monday and he's transitioning. Additionally, we have Tyler Hollenrake and Jim Caverly who've also joined the department in the past two weeks. Both have heavy equipment operator experience and greater operator experience. So hopefully we can um, fill that need more readily. That's good news. And I think the only other item that didn't get addressed on, no, it did, never mind. All right, so that's all I have for you. After action review from last meeting. Tentative items for future meetings. Um, uh, there are asterisks to have the investment yeah, policy. Investment policy, oh yeah, I saw that, yeah. month and a half just put budget <laughs> right since we'll be talking about it you just need us to sign right uh, for the policy. investment policy yeah the investment policy I made the few changes that we talked about in work session and then the only other thing that I noticed was under section 5 um, authorized financial institutions it referenced a schedule a attached for the approved financial institutions but there was no schedule a I couldn't find evidence of one um, checked with Barry with um, Betsy and I just updated the language to include federally insured banks chartered under the laws of New Hampshire and those chartered under the laws of federal government that have a branch located within the state of New Hampshire to cover us there is a website um, the treasurer for the state of New Hampshire maintains a list of qualifying financial institutions for reference. You can get that updated list right from their website. So I just put that in there as a reference point. And then, of course, we would use the public, the New Hampshire public deposit investment pool as necessary as well. So those, that was the only change that was made other than adding in the um, statutory authority for the annual review and readoption. Questions, comments? No. Pretty straightforward. Need a motion yeah. or anything? I just want us to go. So, would like to make a motion to approve this? Yeah, I'll make a motion to approve the updates to the investment policy for the town of Nottingham. I'll second. Motion made by Tim Dabriel, seconded by Matt Sherrill and roll call. Aye, Steve Walsh. Aye, John Warren. Aye, Ben Barlett. Aye, Tim Dabriel. Aye, Matt Sherrill. Okay, unanimous. I there's an original copy in the signature file yeah, that will we, need to be signed. When we send that around, we'll sign it. <coughs> All right, uh, petition and police license agreement. It's a petition and poll. I'm sorry again? Petition and poll, it's for a new um, utility poll. Oh. Fresh my memory where that is. Stevens Hill Road? It was Stevens Hill. Where on Stevens Hill? There's been crews out there all week, so they've already been replaced? Probably. Okay. Are they asking for an underground? They still have to put a utility pole in to service what? the underground into the subdivision. <laughs> it's probably in that. It's in the signature. Yeah. Hmm? It's in the signature package because we just have to sign it. All right. So is everybody in agreement with that? Yeah, they need um, the pole. Right. Okay. What are you going to? Facilities manager job description. See, we got one here. 
Everybody had an opportunity to look it over? No. I had no questions on it. So you, you'll be posting this and re, uh, resumes and all that will be accepted until Monday the 27th? Is that how I'm reading this? Yes, and okay. that's subject to change if you want to make it sooner. I just figured that would give it a little bit more exposure. We had initially talked about the 20th, but you scheduled in an additional meeting for budget review on the 27th. So. John, what do you think? Sooner or just leave it as is? Just leave it as is. Leave it as it is. The rest of the board feel the same? Yeah, 27th is good. Okay. Need a motion for this? No. Okay. There you go. Assessing. We don't have anything. General business. Uh, the hydraulic standard opening bids. So the time of, we accepted a bid for our 2018-2019 Fisher Steel Caster nine foot three yard hydraulic sander. Uh, the sander is being sold as is, where is, no warranty expressed or implied. And there's only one bid it seems. A bid for the amount of $419 um, was submitted by Matt Picken. So the question is, does the board want to let it go for that? Can you say it was worth thousands of dollars? Mm -hmm. So this came from the F550? That one came from the 550. So it's yeah, and it was removed due to being. It didn't even get one got one uh, season use out of it. They didn't like it because it was a hydraulic. Um, the pump inside was noisy. It was you can hear it inside the cab and all that stuff. But um, you're not really supposed to use the hydraulic pump as you're going down the road at 40 miles an hour. But uh, um, it's just meant for subdivisions, slow roads, and all that. Um, but yeah, we we spent like a lot of money on that. Six grand, I believe. Back then, as much as I know Matt and you know whatever, it, no, not for four hundred dollars. Is there a second avenue since we did put it up in the bid and do it now that can we put it out for our, like say hey, Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace or whatever town and audience selling now for thirty five hundred bucks or something at a real number? Yes. Since this avenue didn't work, mm -hmm. okay. So we'll have to think about a reasonable number that we can mm -hmm. put on this and. And make sure we get that by next meeting onto the market, I think. I so believe that's them. also a Fisher one. If you could reach out to Fisher and maybe get an idea what a used one would be in that in that condition. We gotta make a motion to decline. <laughs> I make a motion to decline the offer by Matt Pickens for four hundred and nineteen dollars. I second the Sander. Motion made by John Moore and seconded by Tim Derbio. Roll call. Hi, Steve Walsh. Hi, John Moore. Hi, Ben Barlett. Hi, Tim Dabrio. <coughs> Unanimous. All right. Um, right. It's just about right. seven o'clock, so uh, we're going to go right into the uh, appointed times. The uh, PLIA, yep. please step up. Please state your name and address for the uh, into the mic, please. I'm Neil Santos, I live on Shore Drive, and I've been in charge of the uh, Millfoil program on Tupperware Lake for the last forever nine years. <laughs> yeah. And I'm Pam, I'm Pam Kelly, 35 Sachs Road. I'm uh, also on the board of the Pawtuckaway Lake Improvement Association. I'm here to add weight to Neil's presentation. So I'm going to try this because you, got, you all have a copy of the presentation, but uh, I do have a video at the end that I'd like to show, assuming the technology uh, works. We'll have to probably turn the lights down at the end, uh, but this shows up okay. 
So this has been a very eventful uh, year uh, for several reasons for Factory Lake and no foil issues, and I will get into that. Well, there we go. Whoops. Okay. Uh, no foil was first discovered uh, nine years ago, going on to nine years. It's probably brought in by our park visitor uh, back then and at the Horse Island launch in the state park. The milfoil team was started back in 2015, 2016, and milfoil is now in uh, 16 areas in the lake. Uh, and this is where we started, uh, Horse Island launch, which is right in here. And this is what it looked like as of uh, last year. So you can see it's in a lot of areas, very spread out, as well as in quite a number of coves all around the lake. By the way, all these little coves, they all have association or private boat launches. And these are not monitored by lake hosts, so this could be introducing milfoil in all these private, uh, private launches. Most notably, uh, it's up at the north end of the lake. We've known that for a couple of years now, but uh, there were some reports at the end of last year that there was some right off the town beach. The town beach is right, right here. And we didn't have a chance to really uh, survey it with divers last year. We had a couple of anecdotal reports, uh, but I'll talk about that more later. You can see our total milk flow removed uh, up through 2022. And you can see how much it accelerated uh, between 2021 and 2022. And uh, this year, my guess is if we hadn't done what we ended up doing, we would have been able to double that this year. Uh, the acreage and removal amounts are outgoing every year. And as of last year, it outstripped our volunteer team capabilities. And we had to start paying buyers uh, starting last year to remove the milk flow. And we had a suspicion, based on some new sightings, particularly up north at the town beach, that mm, it was going to get out of control. So we decided to uh, request a grant from New Hampshire DES in, in the fall of last year. The grant request had to be in September. So we submitted the request, only knowing what I showed you on the 2022 map. So the grant application was approved. And for the first time, you request a, a, a invasive species mitigation in New Hampshire. If they have the money, you can get 100% of the cost covered. So based on the amount of acreage on the map you saw, uh, they estimated if they had to treat it all or have a crew come in, it would cost $52,000. So that's the grant amount they, they allowed us. And uh, up to 54 acres of treatment. And that's all the red area on the map that I showed earlier. Of all the areas identified, but it was subject to review and survey by the DES. So the way it worked is they grant the money for the for the maximum, and then they can always reduce it. If they if they do a grant for the smaller amount, they can't increase it. So uh, DES had to review uh, the plans. So our plan for this year, at the beginning of this year, was to search all the areas to, to verify where the milfoil was, you know, was, where it was in 2022, if there was any new areas in 2023, followed up by a DES survey to confirm the plans. And uh, it was really their call as to what areas need to be handled or treated or used to grant money for. So the DES recommended using Procellicor, which is a selective uh, plant growth hormone, uh, for treatment in the high density milfoil areas. And the low and medium density areas, they recommended that we continue to do what we're doing, that is hand pulling by, by our dive team. And obviously, we would continue to keep searching with our milfoil team to verify all the areas and look for more, more milfoil. So uh, uh, the, the chemical Procellicor is, has been approved in New Hampshire since uh, 2018. It's been used to treat over 50 water bodies uh, so far in New Hampshire with great results. It's very selective for a few plants, including variable leaf milfoil. It has little to no effect on the native vegetation, so little side effects, if you will. And it has a very short-term water usage restrictions, mostly related to uh, watering uh, plants or, uh, or gardens or uh, crops. Uh, in terms of water usage, swimming or boating, there really were no restrictions. So it, it's, it seems to be a very great product with very few side effects. And it shows good suppression for at least uh, three years uh, for milfoil. In fact, uh, since it's been used in New Hampshire, uh, by approved by New Hampshire in 2019, with all those water bodies treated, only one water body has had to be treated a uh, second time. 
uh, because of uh, because of the water flow. They, they underestimated the water flow through that area, so the concentrations of uh, Procellicor weren't high enough, and they had to retreat it. Other than that, it shows really good suppression for several years. We don't know how long because it hasn't been you know approved for for that long. And the great thing about I mean I don't like to use chemicals either. I was very disappointed as a leader of the team to have to use chemicals or herbicides, but you know it was really getting out of our control. And uh, the problem with, with hand extraction, diving hand extraction, is we don't see everything. So we can search an area, and we typically find probably 60% of what's there, 75%, whatever. We see the big plants, we don't see the small plants. So we miss stuff. And the other thing is, when you get down in the silt, and, and the divers pull this stuff out, the silt you know, piles up, you have zero visibility, and the divers miss stuff. For big plants, they have to go back four or five times to try to get it all out, and they don't. Uh, we have significant regrowth. So with a, a systemic uh, treatment like this, every plant in the treatment area is affected, and it goes right down to the roots and kills them right down to the roots. So you get much better, more thorough coverage. So it was a tough pill to swallow to, uh, to say we really need help and need herbicides, but it really seemed to be a good choice and the only, really, the only thing we could really do. Uh, finally, up at the north end of the lake, if you look at the map that I showed you, we had this little square up here by the town beach. Well, we, we dove, the team dove here in June, and the place was totally infested with milfoil, more than we've ever seen anywhere else in the lake. This whole cove is totally infested with milfoil. Probably, probably as much milfoil here as we recovered all, we extracted all of last year from the rest of the lake. So it's a good thing we asked for that grant because this would have just, you know, we, we, we were overwhelmed. And this jumped way up north, and I, nobody goes up there other than bathers, except for, I, I hate to condemn fishermen, but it's not a heavy traffic area in terms of, of boating traffic, but it's heavily used by fishermen. So it's probably likely that it was moved up there somehow by people fishing. And by the way, when we went up there, we found a lot of floating fragments. Milfoil spreads by fragmentation. And we found a lot of floating fragments out there, hundreds of them. So this milfoil had gotten, not only was it thick, but it was close to the surface. So props were running through there and just chopping it up. And the other thing here, besides being way up north, is this is where Grounds Dam is. So anything that escapes here is going to go and get down to the Lamprey River and, and affect the uh, Lamprey River water the basin, the watershed. Also, uh, this whole area up here, called Fundy, is very shallow. And if no foil escapes from here, this area here is, is likely to be very infested very quickly. And that's one, one of our high priority items for this coming year is to take a look at this area to see if it, quote, escaped from that area and it has infested this area. Uh, so you see a gray and a red area. The red areas are treated with Procellicor. These gray areas weren't quite as dense, so this area and this area also. So uh, those medium density areas, we, re we diverted some of the money, the grant money, from using herbicides to having a dash team come in to pull the milfoil, search that area and pull the milfoil out. And this is the dash boat that came out of Maine, New England milfoil. They, it cost us, or cost the state, uh, $6,500 $6, for three days worth of work. And they searched all those areas I had in gray, and about, about 30 acres, and removed the milk oil from all of the, those areas. And then, about a week, you know, two weeks later, it was followed up with the Procellicor treatment. Uh, they do is they bring in an airboat, uh, so that there's no prop to chop up the milk oil. They mix this concentrated Procellicor with lake water, at a, at a predetermined uh, rate of uh, dilution. And then they, they inject it into the water. You can see the, the nozzles here under the water. So they do a subsurface injection of the, uh, of the chemical. So there's nothing, nothing in the air. It sits in the water column, it sinks, and the milfoil absorbs the uh, chemical within six to eight hours. And then it doesn't know it's dead, but it's dead. <laughs> this is what milfoil looks like healthy milfoil looks like. This is a bunch of it that was pulled out actually by New England milfoil. And then a week to two weeks afterwards, that's what it looks like. So it just kills the plant. It looks like it had been burned, basically. So very effective. 
Uh, as I mentioned, the DES grant was 52,000 based on the maximum treatment area. The treatment area was reduced, and some funds went to the DASH. It cost 64.96 for DASH, and the prosthetic core treatment was 37,000. <coughs> the future grants, you get a one-time shot at 100%. If we ever need to go for grants in the future, the max is 50%. However, it all depends on how much money the state has and uh, how many requests they have for grants. So it could be 20%, it could be up to 50%, but the point is it won't be 100%. And the, anything that remains from that in terms of what it costs would have to be made up with other funds. Uh, grants, uh, our reserve fund in Nottingham, PLA uh, funds, and so forth. Uh, for potential future costs based on the area we see could be even more than this, but around $60,000. We're going to get some relief, uh, and I'll, I'll, I'll bring that up on the next, uh, next chart based on what we did this year. So I don't anticipate a huge problem for the next few years, but when it comes back and gets like it was in 2022 and in 2023, we could be looking at mitigation costs of around 60K. So it's really important that the town, even though we've not asked you for money for invasive species treatments, we have for the Lake Coast, but not invasive species treatments, it's important that that reserve, reserve fund stay there so that, you know, in anticipation that something like this could happen in the future. Uh, one week after treatment, I showed you uh, the milfoil. We had divers go down and looked in various areas where the milfoil w was treated, and it all looked like I had on that uh, previous slide. We did 10 search dives. We do dive once or twice a week and search for milfoil. Since the end of July, in the treated and non-treated areas, we couldn't find any milfoil. So between what we did, what the DASH team did, what Procellicor did, we're ahead of the curve right now. Uh, at the end of the summer, in September, we did find three small areas of milfoil. They're still there, and we'll, we'll go at them next, uh, next spring. But the point is, the milfoil is not gone. It's not eradicated, it's still there. We've suppressed it. I think we've got it to a point where, at least for the next year or two or three years, we can manage it. After that, we'll just have to see. And of course, the caveat that, you know, we don't know what we don't know. So there could be other areas, you know, far removed from what we found so far where there's milfoil. And we're, gonna, we're gonna find it with, with our weed watchers or, or, or lake residents. Uh, We've got some breathing room based on the activities this year. I do expect to find more milfoil, and we'll continue to search. We're searching, we'll be searching once or twice a week uh, next year, as we have been in the past. <coughs> and lake coasts are going to be a key here. Uh, you know, every time they, they have a save, every time they find something on a trailer or a boat, that saves us hundreds, maybe thousands of hours of human time searching, and you know, potentially tens of thousands of dollars in mitigation costs. So that's, that's really key. Uh, and it's not just milfoil. When you look at the map of New Hampshire, and you look at the lakes around us, you know, Massabesic, for example, Beaver Lake, and so forth, that are not too far away, you find stuff like this. And some of this is even worse than what we have in terms of controlling it and eradicating it. So there's a lot of other things that, you know, we could get hit with. So we can't get complacent. Uh, you know, a particular concern to me, as I mentioned when I showed you that map, is the northern part of the lake is very shallow. And if, if it's up there in the town beach cove, it could very well be in that whole area. That's several hundred acres of very shallow ground, it's very shallow water. And uh, if the foil gets there, then we've got a real problem on our hands. So anyway, so that's the outlook. Uh, any questions on what I've said so far? Just out of curiosity, yeah. for the folks at home that are, that are listening to this, you know, you would said 54 acres you know it's what you came up with what needs to be treated yeah, or yeah. or what you've known to, yeah. to have it how many acres is the lake again uh just shy of 900 900 so 54 acres versus 900 but how much of that is shallow about half about half, half of the and that's where shallow enough for mill foil to grow all right and that's that's where it thrives yeah okay yeah so I, you could have 400 acres of mill foil yeah i uh I had the honor of you know going out this past uh, summer with you, and you give me a tour of the lake. It's uh, very educational, and I encourage the rest of the board members to do the same if you have an opportunity. Glad to be able to take everybody out sometime next spring. Yeah, it was an eye-opening experience. So uh, I applaud your uh, your your effort to, to to limit this. That's a whole big team. Man. Yeah. 
Uh, now I'd like to play for you. If someone could get that light, light switch, I, it doesn't show very well um, here without some light switch. Just like just the right one will give us some light. No, on the right, all the way to the right, right there. Yeah, that's the one. This was taken by a diver uh, on the surface, uh, so you can get a feeling for how close to the surface this milfoil is. That's milfoil, and you'll see more coming up. Yeah, that's milfoil. All this is milfoil. He just did a straight dive on the surface, not a dive, but snorkeling on the surface and took these yeah. videos. This is what the Town Beach Cove looked like this spring. And this was just you know a few feet, but you know, it was like this that whole cove, that whole 15, 20 acres. Looked like this. Hmm. The video is about one minute long. That's all very healthy milfoil. You can see a lot of it is really close to the surface, within a foot of the surface or so. Yeah, but not so much fun. <laughs> and you can't treat it in the fall? You can't treat it whenever it's actively growing. It grows right through the winter, but obviously not as much as it does in the summertime. Mm -hmm. As long as it has sunlight, even through the ice, if there's no snow. They tell me if you have clear ice, you can see it under the ice growing. Not really, you know, really growing. It grows an inch or two a day, by the way. And we, uh, we know that. We, had, we cleared one out of a small cove. We went back two weeks later. It was a foot and a half tall. So it grows fast. It's got a lot of nutrients. That's another reason we like to keep the nutrients out of the lake. <laughs> Any other questions? No, thank you for that presentation. Will you be doing this presentation during deliberation? When we start going over Warren articles, which I certainly would be happy to. Well, just think about that. It would support. Yeah. It would help support yep. your cause yeah. for the ten thousand dollar. Yeah. It's it's the invasive species um, fund. I yeah, think sure. that that you were referring to, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Bingo. Yeah. Thank Thanks. you. Thanks yep. for the reminder, John. Thanks for your oh, time. no worries. <laughs> Mr. Reed, we're a little early, but are you ready? Sure. If you could, just state your name and address, please. Is this Mike Lott? Is this yes. microphone Lott? Yes. I'm going to speak up for the benefit of the people in the room. My name is Eugene Reed, 345 Stage Road, Nottingham. I made a query. That the subject is impact fees and the expenditure of those fees. I sent up the board and Alan um, questions about the Marston well and the financing of that through impact fees. Uh, Alan did respond to me, but it was addressed to the uh, board as well, and I received no input from the board. I've also supplied to Kelly, and she said she supplied <coughs> you a preview of what I had uh, been discussing. I don't know if you got that preview of the law on impact fees and I believe I sent the original query for a preview by the board as you look for that I'll go on uh, according to the lawyers at New Hampshire Municipal Association and the RSA uh, the Nottingham Ordinance impact fees are only to be used for capital projects that are caused by created or occasioned by new development. And for those that don't know what impact fees are, new homes that are built are called new development and they pay an impact fee that is held in their name or the, the lot that paid the fees. And if they're not used within six years for the proper use their return to the owner at the time of return. So I'd ask the board to uh, supply what the Supreme Court is called, Supreme Court of the United States is called the nexus for the direct relationship between the capital project, in this case the Marston Well, and the new development because the, that is what causes the 
project to occur is the connection and my position and the position mostly of lawyers is that in this case new development did not cause this well to be to be drilled the two criteria in many lawyerly reviews for spending impact fees are a direct relationship called the nexus and expenditure of the proportional amount that can be attributed to new development. So if new development had caused this well to be drilled, it would be out of the funds that are held in those, uh, the accounts would be pulled to uh, pay the proportional cost. I've asked for the proportional cost and the response was accurate in that the municipality didn't pay anything for the Marston well, to the best of my knowledge. It was paid by opera funds and impact fees. So the proportion paid by the impact fee holders was 100% as compared to the municipal costs. The municipality, my information indicates, paid nothing. Can you tell me if that's accurate, please? <clears throat> the ARPA funds are considered town funds, right? They're, 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 not, they're not. They're not the municipal costs. How much did the municipality pay? Not my opinion. I'm not arguing with you. The lawyers have said so. Um, I'm learning up here, too. I was not here for this portion of it, but okay. I believe... Do you have more the, for the how the ARPA rolls in like it is? It's been so, given to the state or to the, from the, given from the federal government to the state, from the state given to the town. The town did allocate it is for construction in the town, which it's for municipal purposes. So it is an, an allotment of funds for the town to spend. <coughs> it did not come out of the regular town budget, it came out of the ARPA funds, but it is still town funds. Not my argument. Well, you say you're wrong. And based on ARPA fees or based on Ar ARPA fees? It, 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 cost the it costs the municipality. It costs me, you, everybody that pays taxes. We didn't pay anything. That's a municipal cost. That's what we budget for. That's what we uh, budget for and pay our taxes for. That becomes municipal cost. But have so, they been asked since the arrival or Lamina could the ARPA style funds have only been around post COVID. So in the last two years or so. So, and I believe some of this stuff was from before then where they were using different funds, correct? I don't think that that's true. I would defer to the people that handle the money. I believe that the only money that was dispensed other than impact fees was federal funding for the well, it's not federal for the well. Funding. But would, I guess my question is that, you know, for the impact fees, the um, planning board in 2017 had included the Marston project as part of the rec portion of the impact fees that could be used. So you, you wouldn't broaden the definition of the capital project as the Marston recreational area because it doesn't have to be one expense. It can be over a period of time. But that begs the argument. What if you go that way, which I don't, but this is my opinion, the Marston project was not caused by, occasioned by new development that was planned separately. No one ever came and said, new development is gonna cause us to build Marston Fields. Well, if you read the, that rec report that's on the website. I have read it. Yeah, I mean, the whole, the whole reasoning for that project and that analysis was for future growth of the town it was based upon future growth of the town. It was all projected growth. It was. Yeah. But we haven't had, you cannot tie the two things. You've got to tie the project to the people that own impact fees. The second thing, it should only be proportional. To the proportional part, you're saying federal funds, they're not federal funds, that they are given to the town, they are the town's funds. That they are in our pockets, it's our money. To be used for one thing. 
they supplied it to do that. So it did not cost the town, us. That's the whole premise of impact fees. Rapid, quick development <coughs> can cause capital infrastructure to be built. It happens. In this case, for that, it, they didn't cause it, nor did they cause the development of Marston. New growth didn't cause it. So, so I did respond. I'm not going to. I'm not going to go back and forth. I'll, I've given you an opinion, and you've New Hampshire, <coughs> New Hampshire Municipal Association. I've got a personal response from Mr. Buckley. Uh, Ellen mentioned that she uses, and, and rightfully so, New Hampshire Municipal Association is an advocate for towns and cities. So I, I can't get answers, and I had suggested that the board refund the $6,700 to the impact fee holders, and I did not get uh, a response for that. The law, I, re I supplied that. It's a fee imposed to help. I'm, I'm going to go over it again, but Christine Fillmore, uh, Mr. Buckley, and the nine justices in the Supreme Court do have to have a nexus of the actual project under consideration, and the condition must be roughly proportional to that caused by the development of the impact fees. My sense is, what is the board's intention? Well, I'm just going to say this just because, so take this as, I built a house two years ago. I paid the money into the impact fee. And you know what? In my opinion, I'm happy we used the money because I think it's good for the town and what we did. Right or wrong, I'm happy to contribute to the town. I don't want the money back. I think the well there is a good thing for the town, for the fields, for the kids, for the future of the town, for a future reserve water source. And in my opinion, I'm happy that my fee went there. And that's just my, just throwing out my opinion since I have a stake in the game being that some of that money is my money and my wife's money. I'm happy with what we used it for there. Right or wrong, just throwing out a statement that what I feel. When you were referring to the NHMA, Mr. Buckley, when you were discussing our particular thing, how did you, did you say we used federal funds or what did, did you say there were ARPA funds? I'm just. I did not address the, the fund issue. I, I have not, uh, I've I, I, I I not got, excuse me, I, sure. I have not got loyally input on the ARPA funds. Okay. Yeah, I, I would be curious to see how New Hampshire Municipal opined on this because normally they will take a very general question, not very specific. I mean, each town's um, adoption of impact fees would be tailored around the need of the community and however the planning board established those fees. So, um, I, I mean, I, I think that we would probably have to get a legal opinion based on our unique situation in Nottingham that those recreation impact fees were established specifically for the use at the Marston Recreation Complex and the conceptual design that was, what was that, 2000, how long ago? 10 years ago anyways? Yeah, 17 I think was 17. the last report that was generated, which is now out of dated by the way. Right. Along with a master plan, yeah. So I, outdated. I, I really think that if there if there is question, then we're probably going to have to elevate it to specific questions for a legal review, rather than you know a broad interpretation of what Supreme Court rulings were and somebody's perception of what the RSA states. And we're not ignoring you when we get the we get the emails, but we have to wait to now to respond to you. Ellen responds generally to the board. We've gotten in. She'll try to make the general correspondence. But if we start onesie twosieing or replying to you, then it could potentially be reviewed as a, not, a meeting being held with you or trying to provide answers. So, you are right. Huh? You are right. OK. You are correct. So I didn't want you to think we're ignoring you. We, we've received the information, but you said I have not received, heard anything from the board. I it, did say that. OK. I didn't want to make it seem like we're ignoring you. It's. Oh, but you brought up a good point. OK. You're correct. Thank you. 
<laughs> and I'm not arguing with on this. This is my interpretation of how the ARPA funds were to be used. That they were, they were the big ARPA funds, right? The federal government spent the money. They gave it to the states. The states took everything. They allocated it up for all the towns. So Nottingham, Nottingham has their funds to be used. So I'm definitely would will want to dig into this further, but I think we thought. I, I have an outstanding uh, 91A request in for the ARPA uh, uh, application because I want to see how it was detailed. And a couple other things related to ARPA, which Ellen's working on, I believe. A lot of 91A requests. It's the only way I can find out what's going on, other than <coughs> if I run for selectman, I didn't know what's going on. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Chief. Reed. Okay. Oh, so what's the commitment on the board then? Just to be Alan, you said you have a seat for your advice. Is that what you would like me to do? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, I will. Could you copy on the me? Microphone. Um, anybody that's sought legal advice. As you, one of you pointed out, it really depends on how the question is asked to what you get for an answer. Mm -hmm. So to be non-vague is not good. To be specific is good. So I'd appreciate that. Can I get copied? I know that 91A, I'm not, um, I cannot be, I cannot push you to produce correspondence between attorney and client. Would you extend the courtesy of copying me on the question that goes to the attorney. Absolutely. And I will more than likely forward your exact correspondence so she understands. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Back to general business. Budget review, highway recycling, social services. Um, I sat down with Steve Rollins this afternoon. Um, as I announced earlier his first day was last Monday he's been acclimating and transitioning and getting to know how the highway departments functioning so we didn't really get a lot of time to discuss budget items until today my initial plan was to move forward into the budget process with um, at least a level funded budget for the general maintenance items for both the highway department and the recycling center but I would like to give him the opportunity to look it over so he went home with it tonight for homework and he's going to review it this week um, obviously we know that we had to move a, a bulk of the road maintenance into a Warren article this past year and we'll probably have to do the same thing to meet the tax cap but um, I would like him to have the opportunity to review it so I would like to try to finalize that with him this week um, and then send off a proposed budget for those two both the highway and the recycling center and um, other than that, the social services, I had to reach out to a couple of agencies because we had not received requests. Um, the only one that I'm waiting on as of this date is, let me just find it, I believe it's Lamprey Healthcare. Um, and I have since learned that Richie McFarland has uh, joined forces with Waypoint, so that will be one of the social services that we were contributing $2,700 to. Um, you'll see an increase in Waypoint, but Richie McFarland will be no request moving forward. So um, I will need a couple more days, and I'd like to circulate off the first draft of the official budget to you by the end of this week. When are we scheduled to sit down and actually start? want to say cutting but that's basically what we're gonna end up doing so when is our official date so that people at home can know if they want to come and listen to us your next meeting is scheduled for the 20th the department heads are scheduled to go before the budget committee on the 16th of this month so I would like to plan the bulk of that meeting to be just that at that point we should be closer to the tax rate setting right now we're waiting for the school district to get their information in but um, we'll be doing revenue review at that point, and we can fine-tune it based on preliminary figures that'll be used for the tax rate setting. So I, I think we can probably get a pretty good handle on, on it the 20th, and then you have a special meeting scheduled again for the 27th, at which point, you know, that should be the... Well, the 27th, we'll, yeah, 
is where we actually sit down and we discuss what we're cutting as the group. Yes. That's the meeting where I think some people would probably want to see and understand what we're doing mm -hmm. and listening to what we're doing. So it would be good just that they have the record that when they come here to see what we are doing and the decisions that we are making in order to reach the tax rate that the 4%. Mm -hmm. That's a special we meeting. It's not a regular meeting, right? That's correct. That, so that will right. be a special meeting just for that purpose. And again, that date is 27th. October 27th. Thank you November very much. 27th. November, I'm sorry, November 27th. <laughs> Thank you very much. And then has he had a chance? Part of the big thing is to properly set, you know, usually the Warren article says, does a town to fix this road, this road, this road? Has he had a chance to make it around at all? To He's very familiar with our roads, just from. Okay. best practice history but uh, we do have a very uh, we have a road management plan somewhat in place and we're three to four years behind schedule obviously COVID delayed things and then financing it has been another difficult decision so um, it's a matter of picking up the pieces where we really need to prioritize versus what needs to be paved and we might have to look at some additional attention finding instead of like paving an entire road if 70 percent of it's good fixing the bad spots for a year or two to get everything kind of caught up and moved through instead of have the shoulders on deerfield road been taken care of yet you know they were supposed to come back out last monday and it rained a week ago monday it rained so they weren't able to i'm not sure if they made their way out they were partially repaired they had only done about a 300 foot section they do have to come back and and do that um, okay. And then they I saw the flutter streets all set, but it's just that there's yeah. portions of Deerfield that need it. You know, the, uh, the shoulder work there. Uh, okay. Any more on that? When you reached out to the social services, ones that you had blanked on there, did they all respond back that they want the money? Yes. Of course. And there was a lot of them that had sent requests to Chris Sterndale's old email address, so they were archived away. So that's going to have to be added into the ones that we were talking about already. Correct. Good. But I think there's only one, maybe two, that increased, and it was minimal. You have comments, <coughs> questions? No? Okay. Town building lease agreement. Everybody had an opportunity to review it? We did, did we put this out? I should probably start with a, what it is and how we got here. Okay. So this building lease agreement uh, is, is being proposed for the old fire station. All right. There's three bays over there. Um, a resident uh, who has a uh, business is looking to have uh, use of one bay and is willing to lease a bay uh, from the town. Now, if you go back and if you were following with the facilities uh, uh, committee's uh, report in regards to the, some of the statuses that these buildings are in, um, the old fire department being one of them, not in best of shape, however, it still houses you know, equipment and so on. This is, you know, I don't want to speak for everybody on the board, but I felt that this was a good, uh, um, you know, a, a deal to move forward with whatever money that is made off of that particular bay, or even if we rent another bay, goes right back into that building for uh, maintenance and repairs and so on and so on. Essentially, it will not cost the town uh, um, money if we're re repurposing that money that, that's being made off of it. I view it as a win-win situation for the town and the uh, person who w wishes to uh, to lease it. And I know that there are some other folks out there that are also interested in leasing the other bay. Um, so, you know, at a time where we're inundated with a bunch of uh, um, information in regards to how kind of what kind of condition our buildings in, uh, I think that this is a uh, good way to uh, get that building back to where it needs to be as far as being in a uh, um, 
good place as far as uh, a building it's it's you can continue to use yeah it's gonna need some work but if you know we're renting out those bays and they don't seem to care what it what it is the roof is still solid the door is still open uh, little things here and there that need to be done to it but you know whatever that's being made off that building will go right back into it that's the purpose of the lease agreement Are the they will not be separated so what but that'd be something we could explore down the road but as of right now they will not be separated Um, as I read through the lease agreement here, you know, they know that we're not doing nothing to this building. They're renting it basically as is, as space. Basically, they're just renting a, a covered, and that's that's it. Correct. And it's a short-term lease. It's a seven-month lease. Yep. Yeah. Understand that that's there. it's just going to be just covered for the winter. Uh, it's not seven, but it's six. Yeah, it's six. <laughs> the number oh, seven. Sorry, six. That's why I was reading the sorry. Well, it says six, and then in parentheses yeah. seven. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, I saw that. Yeah. Yeah. Not a surprise. Um, you know, so I mean, there's no heat. There's they know up front and clear that they're getting what they're getting. What 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 are they going to be storing in there? Um, I believe it is just the tanks. They clean them out, so it's just the tanks that they use to service the porta potties. Okay. I thought the truck. And the truck. I think it's two trucks back to back with the mm -hmm. tanks on them. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, it's whatever solution they use. They just try to keep them from being frozen. And they're covering their own insurance policy. Correct. They That's would have to have their own insurance. Yep. We would have to be listed as additional, additional insured. insured. Yep. And. And you can define. Contrary to what you just said, the money that's bringing in that we get from this, I mean. Before we satisfy and say that's where we're going to spend it on that building, there might be something else we can use that money for that might be more prudent. Yeah, than, I mean, we can't yeah. say well, that's where we're going to spend well, that building. Just, I, I'd, just like to, I, I I'd like to say that you know to ensure that the building is still standing in a year from now. You know, the things will be addressed. Well, if it's not standing, we're always going to rent it. So, but yeah. I just wanted to make that clear that 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 money hasn't been quite said that it's going to automatically go back i'm just saying what i'd like to see it go for but I'm just it's obviously a decision yeah. of the board you know, know. that's just why i said i wasn't speaking for the board just reiterating yeah and they people potentially like to interpret things their own way oh i know I want to make sure oh i know want a longer term correct lease they they would entertain a longer agreement if you were to offer one i started this initially for the six months with the option to renew for a year if you would like um that's well since all. we're not in the rental business let's first see how it works no, I mean you can you can leave it as is, or you can just do a short-term six-month rental. And they're not going anywhere, so I'm sure we can start with the six month and yep. you know to do our due justice, just to make sure it works out for the town and for them, so that we're not locked into something that if it doesn't work out for some reason, mm -hmm. it allows us to yeah, we have a, reevaluate this. There. And I mean, right. if somebody wants to come in and throw more. Money. Which bay do you think of the one on the left? I think it is the furthest one to the left, if I remember correctly. Mm -hmm. Do we also we also plow in oh, front of the one closer that to the door? I thought she wanted because all the tires and stuff are on the far left. Yes. So she's looking at the first one by the, the door, building. the small door. Mm -hmm. oh. Entry door. I'm sorry. And we are plowing in front of that, anyways, aren't we? Correct. Can we have to move anything? This? What? Do we have to move it? Anything to the side because there is nothing, stuff. There's nothing. There's right nothing there. in uh, right now. There's a plow, but that'll be removed mm -hmm. anytime now. And how much do we use of it? We don't. It's storage for highway. Uh, there's sandbags, construction. Rec signs. vehicle goes in it. The van. Yes, the rec, rec vehicle the goes in there in the winter. And I think there was. A Police will sometimes put their new cruiser in there if it's not ready outfitted. You know, other than that. Yeah, they keep, do they keep the four wheeler in there? No, the they day? keep no. it in there, Sally Port. You take public comment on this before you vote. Why not? That's my opinion. Hmm? Yes, why not? <laughs> uh, Go ahead, Gene. Three minutes. 
take me 30 seconds to okay. come. As a former landlord, think liability. Mm -hmm. um, that station, if my memory serves me correct, had mold. Um, I, I would also advise the insurance company that the use of the building has changed. Liability. Thank you. Thank you. Questions, comments from the board? No, I make a motion to approve the lease for six months as written. Then we can we convene again in May. Right. I'm sorry, what was that, Tim? I said, and then we just convene again in April, May and see how it's going. And Okay. Motion made by Tim Derby, second made by Steve Welch. Roll call. Aye, Steve Welch. Aye, John Moore. Aye, Ben Bartlett. Aye, Tim Debrio. Aye, Mushroom. Unanimous. Review, action item reviews for the next meeting. You did mention budget. Any others? Um, one thing that we had brought up a few months ago was looking at purchasing a trailer for the aluminum cans for the recycling center. I think we need to revisit that before winter hits. Yes. Because if that trailer hits a frost heave, I have a feeling it's going to it's fall, fall into apart. six pieces. Absolutely right. <clears throat> Well, when do you want to talk about that since it's an assessor? Is that coming up on the next meeting's agenda? Is there anything left over in the highway fund that you think that could cover that? End of year funding? Can that be used? Highway fund can be used? No. No? Mm -hmm. What yes, about their budget? No, uh, <laughs> that other fund's for road. Hmm? It has to be for the other fund that I think you were referring to has to be for like road, road right. maintenance. Um, I guess we could say we're trying to not destroy the road by dragging the trailer down it, but uh, I don't think that counts. Yeah. Let me look at the recycling center. I think that's a little too vague. <laughs> it didn't look like we are using it now, one. right? To transport. Have you seen it? Forth. No, I have not. Oh, <laughs> things shouldn't yeah, be on the road. I mean, we had talked about it a few months ago, and we're trying to kind of piece between that the baler and everything else they need. Yeah. And I think the baler can still maybe hold off until next year potentially, but that is a safety concern I feel I don't know how it's they would be moved. repair oh, that's way beyond repair way beyond I, I encourage you to go up and take a look at it okay um, I, I can possibly make it work in the recycling centers budget we might we might have to get creative and split it between there and the highway okay uh, let's let's see what you come up what with. What is the overall? I know we had. I don't have it in front of me, so that's why I'm asking the question. The we didn't have an actual cost. We would have to get an actual. Mm -hmm. Well, we just quoted a ballpark. I think it was six thousand right. dollars. Is what the thought was. Right? It was all depending on if that was the flat trailer, but then the flat trail was maybe going to have to have higher mesh sides. Sides basically built into the thing that we have now. The thing that we have now could put. Potentially, I mean, I've seen trailers in much worse shape be used before, like maybe just an axle swap and put it through a coat of paint, like a whatever. I've, I'm up to the recycling center almost every weekend. I mean, I've used that thing for a while. So, I mean, it visually does not look very appealing. I have not checked the underneath carriage, like everything that's with it, but I think we are putting a lot more miles on it now than we had before, because before we were able to crush the cans so it was more of a dense load and it would go every like third week or something like that yeah. now it's every monday it has to go because they're they're not being compacted anymore so it's full by monday so i don't know if it can be gussied up if it's worth it but it may be a shorter term three-year fix to get us down the road or if it would have to be completely new but we don't have an actual quote to vote on yet and we don't know what we have to spend if so. we could if we could get a general idea of what it would cost i i'm happy to apply to new hampshire the beautiful and see if we can get some grant funding to help towards the purchase as well, well we that might be the way to go the dimensions are is it a five by eight is it a six by ten is it what the eight. dimensions are yeah how high it needs to be what it needs to contain we need to i mean not to make a pain you know out of this project but you know you're going to go for a quote this is not something that you go to the local trailer company and say hey I'll take that. That'll work for my, you know, this, this has to be customized for yeah. our special need and use. Mm -hmm. So those things are all need to be predetermined before we send it out to a company that's going to make this trailer. Yep. The size that's there now is 
if we are not going to get a, either a compacto or a baler again, we would maybe, if we're going to be doing this, get a slightly longer one, not necessarily wider or taller, because the height now is accessible by humans to get to the side, even including, including young children to like dump stuff in. So we could potentially make it slightly longer to either increase the capacity or limit how many tra trips we're making. We got to do a little bit of um, research. Yeah, before we I, go just, any I just don't want to put it off. I mean, we talked about it, and it, I think it needs to be done sooner than later. I so, agree. since you're that, you're gonna take the footnote and get in those dimensions to get in the stuff from yeah. Wayne this week, yeah. so that we can have it for absolute discussion. Yep. Yeah. Well, again, I mean, once you get it done, we got to just yeah, I'll work on it. Some more research on yeah, it. Yeah, you know? I'll work on it this week. I'll snap a couple of photos. I'll take a quick look. Over. I'll go over tonight. <laughs> Uh, and the other piece with the recycling center too is, uh, I think I mentioned it to you, is that, well, I know you've all seen it, is that it's eroding the, it yeah. is if, uh, now that we've got more highway department personnel, if they can get yeah. more Jersey batteries over there? Uh, Brian stopped over this afternoon. He said that he's going to be bringing those over there at a snowplow operator training. The entire highway department is in the morning tomorrow, but I believe he said he was gonna try to get to that on Wednesday. Um, so hopefully those will be in place before they reopen on Thursday. And just to kind of piggyback off of the recycling center, um, Veterans Day, of course, is an observed holiday. Um, the town office observes it on Friday. The recycling center, where they are open on Saturday, could technically observe it, but um, the staff over there has opted to work to not change the flow of the, the schedule. So they will be working for Veterans Day on the holiday. I believe Art is a veteran. I believe he is. <coughs> so they have been given the option to um, take a floating holiday or other So they will be compensated for the day. Correct. They won't be? They will. They will be, they will be okay. compensated All right. All right. for working for the holiday. Correct. Okay. It's very nice that they, yeah. they do that in the minimum staff that we have there to Positive note. Should we talk about the bags now or later? Um, I reserve that conversation because I, I believe Wayne wants to be present, so that's reserved for the meeting on the 20th. Okay. Anything else for the uh, action item review? No. Do we have a non public today? We do not. We do not. Okay. So this is where I'll open it up to public comment. And if somebody has anything in the audience that they'd like to say and come up, oh, please sure. please uh, do so. Speak loudly in the mic with your name and address. And so I think I was supposed to be on the agenda <laughs> for the 6th to talk about the food pantry. OK, you're welcome to. That's OK. <laughs> if I could, just for a few. So I just wanted to, um, because we have some new board members, just to share about the food pantry and just a little bit of the history of it. So the food pantry, we're actually our own 501c3. Um, Charlie Brown, at the time, um, we had a relationship to, um, so that we were able to have the food pantry be brought into the town offices here. Um, so I just, um, a little bit of what I would like to see when you get to budget is looking at your welfare line um, because our welfare line is quite small. And, um, and that's hugely in regards to Supanoint and the work that she does and, um, and the resources that she has. So it's not always going to be that way, and I'm really concerned about that line um, because it was cut um, a few years ago, I think in half. So um, between, her, her, between Sue and myself and the relationship that we have, the food pantry has really been using a lot of the funds that we have 
to offset what would be coming out of that line. So I just kind of want to have that out there for you when you get to that point of looking at, or the budget committee, looking at that welfare line. Like, oh, it's the same, or it's not going anywhere, um, money's not being used out of it. It really would be <laughs> if Sue didn't have the resources that she has to get people in different organizations um, with funding coming from those organizations or from the food pantry. So Shelly, is that, is that the um, welfare <coughs> coordinator, the $1,700 a year? Mm -hmm. It's that entire line item. It's the $3,000 total annual for you know mortgage and rental assistance, utilities, fuel, food. Yeah, mm -hmm. but her position specifically you're talking about. I'm talking about that whole, oh, whole that whole, oh, okay. the whole thing. I, I mean, right now it looks good because we don't expend, but it's because we're utilizing the resources that are available through the food pantry and from right. um, just that there's a, there's a variety of resources out there, but you have to have the knowledge to point people in the direction of how to get them. So potentially if anybody comes in here and they have a disconnect notice, um, Sue does a great job at trying to utilize those programs, but ultimately it is on the, on the town to be able to provide that to the needy as they need mm -hmm. it. And there's been a few times where she's come to us and she has asked, all right, the town will pay for half of this utility bill. Can the food pantry help with the other? And we have. Um, we have people that come, um, and already this year I've filled two oil tanks for people um, because they're waiting on their fuel assistance, and so they don't have the funds right now. So we've done that. Um, we're doing uh, helping out with car registration, so we've helped to single moms and this is out of the food pantry this is out of the food pantry mine. so which is which is primarily all donations right yep is how you get all your funds and yep. stuff like this all donations from our town yep. because they know that it stays in town just kind of reiterates they just know now. that it stays in town right so yeah do you know if other towns set up reserve accounts for general assistance no, but, I mean, there's other towns that utilize food pantries and other community services that yeah. they have available to them. Uh, there's a lot of local churches that have funds available. So, I, I mean, it just depends on where you can get the resource. Mm -hmm. okay. And I mean, our program has expanded so much. It was in the beginning just strictly food, and now it really has expanded, which has been great because it's offsetting that. But I just want you to know, and I want the budget committee to understand that that would be a lot more. Our numbers have gone up. We've gone from like 20 families, we're now over 30 families right now. How long that is that? we're serving. Is that in the last year? Is that the last 10 years? Is that No, last? probably in the last six months. Just this week I have two new people that I'm gonna be servicing. Is all the money that's donated spent every year that's given to the food pantry? No, we have an account. Okay, I, I just yep. never seen it, no, so I have no idea. Don't. I'm just asking in general. I yep. mean, do folks usually start with you or start with community action and get referred to you? They, um, well, it depends. If they don't know that there's a food pantry here, they usually go to community action and then they refer them back to their town for food. Right. Um, community action will only cover probably electric and fuel. Yeah. yeah. And it's usually good till September 30th yeah. that they'll start. The application process, some people. But they'll pay back pay. They will. Some. It depends. Mm -hmm. But we have people, like, we have people that come in, and a lot of it's elderly. We have a lot more elderly now. And it has a lot to do with the food that we put out here on Thursdays. We have a lot. It's just, it really has helped to build a relationship when I come out here to talk to some of the people and then they're comfortable to come into the pantry. A lot of the elderly people are very hard to, they don't want to have to get to that point, but they are. So we, I mean, right now, we have 27 elderly families that we're servicing. And you're saying that you think these numbers need to go up? I'm saying I wouldn't get rid of it. Oh, okay. I mean, it yeah. went, they, it got cut in half yeah, right. <laughs> a few years ago, and I was not too happy because it got cut in half. And regardless but of where the budget is, we, I mean, if, if it's the assistance gonna, needs to be granted, we need to find the funding. Right. You're going to have to find it in another line. Right. right. 
But I'm just saying right now, I think the town's doing well because the food pantry can offset some of that. Due to the fact that you're getting enough donations. Yeah. If those start to deplete, then you're going to be in. Oh, we're prayed over in that place. <laughs> we'll be good. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, if it depletes and things are getting more and more expensive, it's not. Yeah. And the thing of it is, is some of these elderly people, they come in, they can't qualify for fuel assistance because they have money. They have money, like a right. Not, I want to say a huge amount, but they have money in an account, and that gets looked at. That money in their account, they don't understand, is taken out twice a year just to pay their taxes. But they get penalized for it. So when it comes down to it, I'm not, I, you know, there's some people they, you know, that I've talked to, the elderly, and they're out there and they're heats down to like 50. I'm like, turn the heat up, we will get you oil. A lot of them are too proud to take money. They are, but there more are coming in and I'm so thankful right. that more are coming in now. It's awesome. Yeah. That we care. Yeah, that we can do that for them. Yep. So. Because you don't ask to see their bank accounts. No, I don't ask for right. anything. I just ask that they live in help. town. I just ask that they live in do town. You need help. Yep. So we don't do any of that. And if Great they need service. it more, if they need more than once a month, we try to do it the we do it the third week so that it gets them through that last week of food stamps and social security checks. Is there a way that uh if people want to can they stop by on Thursday if somebody wanted to drop a check off for you to donate to the food pantry? Mm -hmm. Is there a certain time of day or some this is a little plug for Anybody out there yeah. wants to donate uh, <laughs> any cash or money to help the food pantry on we can Thursdays? Go to the concert. Go to the concert on Sunday. <laughs> or go to the concert. Uh, yeah. And do checks just, get made just, out to the food to the town or for the, to the food no, pantry? No, to the Nottingham Food Pantry. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You have Venmo. Huh? <laughs> Venmo. Venmo. <laughs> but yeah, so that was my concern when it comes to budget okay. season, just because. It's, it's just all around expensive. Mm -hmm. Thank you for all you yeah. do. Please Thank you. I love doing it. So that was just my concern. I'll be back for more. But <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Shelly. That's Thank the main Shelley. concern. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Shelly. Anybody else talk comment? Mm. Quick question. John, help me understand. You mentioned that there's a 4% limit on the tax rate. Is it, I don't know the answer. Is it 4% on the budget or 4% on the tax rate? It's 4% on the, the appropriation, the, the amount to be raised by taxation. So what's so the, the final budget, line the tax item rate. was from last year, the next budget coming from the budget committee cannot be greater than 4% above. So it's the budget, not the tax rate. But that's well, how they determine the tax. Yeah. yeah. That determine well, whatever our budget turns out. Is yeah, I'm not is the, calling you on it. I need it. I no, wanted no, 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 no. But that's again, you know how the, I mean, you know how the system works. Yeah, so I think there's a there's a lot more to it to the tax rate yeah, than there is to the budget. Well, ex exactly right. But thank I think you. there's a line item on here that says <coughs> what the target four yeah, percent max would yeah, be. It's like five million. Five million forty-four thousand dollars. That was a Warren article, wasn't it? Correct. The tax cap? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Oh, yeah. We have a motion to adjourn. Make a motion to adjourn. I'll second. A motion made by Steve Welch, seconded by Tim Dabriel. Roll call. Aye, Steve Welch. Aye, John Warren. Aye, Ben Bartlett. Aye, Tim Dabriel. Aye, Matt Shirley. Aye, Nottingham. <laughs>